Hello and welcome to episode 13 of the Clinton Victory Election Series. Decision 2024. The Republican nominees, President Donald Trump and Vice President Joni Ernst versus California Senator Kamala Harris and Texas Congressman Joaquin Castro. Taking a look at Donald Trump's approval rating on the Republican side, he has a net 92% approval rating. No surprise there. On the Democrat side, he has a net negative 88% disapproval. No surprise. Over on the third party supporters, your independents and others, libertarians, greens, so on and so forth, he has a 6% disapproval with them, giving him a nationwide disapproval of 1%, with a total percent of approval at 48%. Taking a look at Kamala Harris, she has a net disapproval of 90% with Republicans, a net approval with Democrats of 78%. And third party support, she has a net negative, she has a net negative 14% disapproval. Her total support, she has a 44% approval rating across the nation, giving her a net negative 9% disapproval rating. It is now 7 p.m. and the following states have poll closings. Out of Indiana, Donald Trump is the projected winner. He will go on to win this state by 25 points. Out of Kentucky, Donald Trump will be the projected winner. He will go on to win this state by 25 points. Out of South Carolina, Donald Trump will be the projected winner of this state, going on to win here by 10 percentage points. Vermont will go to Kamala Harris. She will go on to win this state by 30 points. Virginia will go to Kamala Harris. She will go on to win this state by 10 percentage points overall. Out of Georgia, it is currently too close to call. Kamala Harris is a 20-point lead over Donald Trump. And here's the current electoral map. Donald Trump leads 28 electoral votes to Kamala Harris' 16 electoral votes. And out of the Indiana Senate race, Luke Messer will go on to win his second term to the Senate. He will go on to defeat Brad Ellsworth by 15 percentage points, underperforming Donald Trump. Out of Vermont Senate race, this was Bernie Sanders' old seat. Al Giordano will be elected to his first term in the Senate defeating Scott Milne by around 25 percentage points, underperforming Kamala Harris. Out of Virginia Senate race, currently too close to call, Kenny Alexander is leading incumbent Senator Nick Freitas by 30 points. And here's the current Senate composition. Republicans have 41 seats. They only need around 9 seats. 9, 10 seats. Let's say 10 on the safe side. Donald Trump could lose tonight. They only need 10 seats in order to regain the majority. Democrats at 28 seats. They still have a long way to go here tonight. Out of Indiana's governor race, former Congressman Trey Hollingsworth will be elected to his first term as governor. He will go on to defeat Linda Lawson by 20 points. Out of Vermont's governor race, Phil Scott will be elected to another term as governor, defeating Congresswoman Becca Belin by 30 points. And here is the current governor composition. Representing the Democrat Governor Association is Hawaii Governor Kaika Hill. And representing the Republicans Governor Association, Wyoming Governor Mark Gordon. Democrats currently leading 21 seats, the Republicans 19. But if we have to remember, Democrat Republicans are defending a lot more seats here tonight. It is now 7.30 p.m. and the following states have poll closings. Out of Ohio, the formerly battleground state, now safe Republican state, Donald Trump will be the projected winner here, going on to win this state by around 12 percentage points. Out of West Virginia, Donald Trump will be the projected winner. Going on to win here by 45 points. Out of North Carolina, currently too close to call, Kamala Harris is a 14-point lead over Donald Trump. Out of Georgia, too close to call, Kamala Harris is a 12-point lead over Donald Trump. Her lead narrowing quite a bit. And here's the current electoral map on your screen now. Donald Trump has 49 electoral votes to Kamala Harris' 16 electoral votes. Out of Ohio Senate race, John Kasich retiring this year, being replaced by Secretary of State Frank LaRose. He will go on to defeat Paul Hackett by 10 percentage points. Out of West Virginia Senate race, Don Blankenship retiring this year. Uh, Congressman Alex Mooney will be elected to his first term to the Senate, defeating Paula Swearingen by 45 points. Out of Virginia Senate race, currently two goals to call Kenny Alexander's lead, dropping by a big margin. Now only have a 10 point lead over Nick Freitas. And here's a current Senate composition. Democrats still at 28 seats. Republicans at 43 seats. Out of West Virginia's governor race, J.B. Mikuski will be elected to his first term as governor, defeating Ron Stallings by 45 points. Out of North Carolina's governor race, currently too close to call. Robert Reeves has a pretty wide lead 
over a pretty unpopular incumbent Republican governor in Dan Forrest. And here is the current governor's composition. Democrats have 21 seats for the Republicans, 20 seats. It is now 8 p.m. and the following states have poll closings. Alabama will be projected to go to Donald Trump as he wins the state by 25 percentage points. Mississippi will go to Donald Trump as he will go on to win the state by 16 percentage points. Missouri will go to Donald Trump as he wins the state by 15 percentage points. Oklahoma will go to Donald Trump as he wins the state by 40 points. Tennessee will go to Donald Trump as he wins the state by 23 percentage points. Connecticut will go to Kamala Harris. Donald Trump did try, did put some time into Connecticut, hoping to make competitive, but Kamala Harris will still end up winning the state by 12 percentage points. Delaware will go to Kamala Harris, a state that Trump put, another state Trump put time into, but Harris will win the state by 15 percentage points. Washington, D.C. will go to Kamala Harris, no surprise here. Illinois will go to Kamala Harris. She will win the state by 15 percentage points. Maryland will go to Kamala Harris. She will win here by 25 percentage points, as Donald Trump does better in the rural areas. Massachusetts will go to Kamala Harris. She will win here by 25 percentage points. Rhode Island, another state Donald Trump put money into, put some time into, making it closer. Won't be closer. Kamala Harris is the projected winner. She will win here by 14 percentage points, winning every single county. Out of Florida, currently too close to call, Kamala Harris is a 10-point lead over Donald Trump. Maine, too close to call, Kamala Harris is a 22-point lead over Donald Trump. New Hampshire, too close to call, Kamala Harris is a 30-point lead over Donald Trump. New Jersey, too close to call, Kamala Harris is a 40-point lead over Donald Trump. Pennsylvania, too close to call, Kamala Harris is a 20-point lead over Donald Trump. North Carolina, too close to call. Kamala Harris is a six-point lead over Donald Trump. Her lead narrowing. Out of Georgia, too close to call still. Kamala Harris' lead narrows to an eight-point lead over Donald Trump. And here is the current electoral map. Donald Trump still leads 93 electoral votes to Kamala Harris' 74 electoral votes. We still have plenty of states left to call. Well, uh, excuse me. Plenty of states left to call here tonight. So it is still anyone's race. At a Connecticut Senate race, Chris Murphy, someone who was once seen as a rising star but now just an institution in the party, will be re-elected to another term, def to defeating Gretchen Carlson by 12 points. I am so sorry, that is a massive fuck up on my part. At a Delaware Senate race, Tom Carper retiring, now being replaced by progressive Carrie Harris, who will be elected to her first term, defeating Christine O'Donnell by 12 points. At a Maryland Senate race, the first transgender, I swear I've talked about her three times in the past week. Jesus Christ, help me. She will be the first transgender ever elected to the Senate, and she will beat God bless Larry Hogan, who I'm talking about again, who's losing to this woman by 12 points. Jesus Christ. Anyway, at a New Jersey Senate race, a state that many Republicans thought they could flip, but Bob Menendez decided to retire, and Democrats nominated Blue Dog moderate Democrat Rob Andrews, and Republicans nominated hated gov former Governor Chris Christie, Rob Andrews, outperforming all expectations, or I guess outperforming Kamala Harris, which ain't much, and he will win by 20 points. Out of Rhode Island Senate race, Sheldon Whitehouse, who's gone on some racism scandals here recently, will be elected to another term in the Senate. He will defeat Robert Nardo Lilo by 15 points. Out of Mississippi Senate race, Chris McDaniel will be re-elected to a second term in the Senate, defeating Omaria Scott by 20 points. At a Missouri Senate race, Josh Hawley will be re-elected to another term, defeating Jason Kuntz by 20 points. At a Tennessee Senate race, Stephen Fincher will be elected to his first term in the Senate, succeeding retiring Senator Marshall Blackburn. And he will, Jesus Christ, ignore it. At a Florida Senate race, too close to call, Randolph Bracey has a 16-point lead over Jeff Atwater. This is a state where incumbent Senator Rick Scott decided to retire. Democrats nominated Blue Dog Democrat Randolph Bracey. Republicans nominated neocon establishment Republican Jeff Atwater. At a main center race, this was an independent Angus King's seat, but he is retiring. And Democrats nominated progressive Cynthia Deal, while Republicans nominated a nationalist, a right-wing nationalist, Richard Bennett. Cynthia Deal currently has a 28-point lead over Richard Bennett. At a Pennsylvania Senate race, too close to call, Bob Casey Jr., the incumbent senator, has a 30-point lead over David McCormick. 
And out of Virginia Center, race, big news for Democrats. This is one of the top seats they were targeting this year. Kenny Alexander has defeated incumbent Senator Nick Freitas and has gained this seat for the Democrats, defeating Nick Freitas by four percentage points, losing Virginia Beach in the process. But a win is a win. And here's the current Senate map on, or the Senate composition on your screen now. Democrats bumped up 28 to 34 seats, while Republicans are at 47 seats. Republicans only need four more Senate seats in order to retain their majority. Out of Delaware's governor, Ace Matthew Dent, will be elected to his first term as governor, defeating Colin Bonini by 10 percentage points. Out of New Hampshire's governor, Ace Chris Sununu, being re-elected to another term as governor, defeating Dan Phelps once again by 30 percentage points. Out of North Carolina's governor, Ace Two Coastal Caller, Robert Reed's lead dropping down to a 12-point lead over Dan Forrest. And here is the current governor composition. Democrats still lead at 22 seats for the Republicans, 21 seats. It is now 8.30 p.m. in the following states. Arkansas has poll closings. Out of Arkansas, Donald Trump, no surprise here, is the projected winner. He will go on to defeat Kamala Harris by uh, 28 points. Out of Florida, we can now make a call here. Donald Trump will win this state by a likely margin, defeating Kamala Harris by 5 percentage points. A big win for Donald Trump here in the state of Florida. And out of New Jersey, Kamala Harris will carry this state. That is becoming more and more of a battleground. Kamala Harris is the projected winner in New Jersey, winning this state by 8 percentage points as Donald Trump does better with the white working class Southern Jersey voters. Out of North Carolina, we can now make a projection. Donald Trump is the projected winner. He will go on to win the state by 1 percentage point. A very, very narrow victory for Donald Trump in this race. Out of Maine, too close to call. Kamala Harris lead drops down to 12 points. Out of New Hampshire, still too close to call. Kamala Harris lead drops to 10 points. Out of Pennsylvania, too close to call. Kamala Harris lead at 12 points. Georgia, too close to call. Kamala Harris leads now at 8 points. And here is the current electoral map right now. Donald Trump has 145 electoral votes to Kamala Harris's 88 electoral votes. And out of Florida Center, he's still too close to call. Randolph Bracey now has a 10-point lead over Jeff Atwater. Main Center, race too close to call. Cynthia Deal has a 9-point lead over Richard Bennett. Out of Pennsylvania, too close to call. It is a, well, that's supposed to be a 10-point lead for Bob Casey Jr., but it's a statistical tie, I guess. And here's the current Senate composition right now. Democrats at 34 seats are the Republicans' 47 seats. And now we can make a big call for Republicans out of North Carolina's governor race. Rupert Reeves will be elected to his first term as governor, defeating Dan Forrest and a historically unpopular incumbent going into this race. Robert Reeves defeats him by one percentage point. It's kind of an inverse of Donald Trump's victory, uh, but this time Robert Reeves defeating Dan Forrest by one percent. And here's the current Senate the governor, excuse me, governor composition. Kai Hill has a Tyka Hill and the Democrats at 23 seats, and Mark Gorin at, and the Republicans at 21 seats. Still anyone's race here tonight. However, I say it leans Republicans because Republicans have a lot of safe races going into the night in Washington. Of course, being, I guess, the only other Democrat seat for Democrats, of course. It is now 9 p.m., and the following states have full closings. Kamala Harris will be the projected winner in the state of Colorado, a state that used to be a battleground now becoming a solid Democrat state as Harris wins the state by 13 percentage points. Out of New York, Kamala Harris will be the projected winner here. She will win here by 15 percentage points as upstate New York continues to trend more and more Republican. Out of Kansas, Donald Trump will be the projected winner here. He will go on to win the state by 15 points, a very college-educated, white, heavy state. Out of Louisiana, Donald Trump will be the projected winner. He will win here by 18 percentage points. Out of Nebraska, Donald Trump is the projected winner. He will win here by 26 percentage points. Out of North Dakota, Donald Trump is the projected winner. He will win here by 40 points. Out of South Dakota, Donald Trump, the projected winner. He will win here by 35 points. Out of Wyoming, Donald Trump will easily win here, winning the state by 50 percentage points. And it's safe to assume Republicans are maxed out in the state of Wyoming. And out of Arizona, it is too close to call. Kamala Harris has a 16-point lead over Donald Trump here. Out of Michigan, too close to call. Kamala Harris has a 26-point uh, lead over Donald Trump. Out of Minnesota, too close to call. Kamala Harris has a 32-point lead over Donald Trump. Out of New Mexico, too close to call. A state Donald Trump narrowly carried in 2020 over Hillary Clinton. Kamala Harris has a 30-point lead here. Out of Texas, too close to call. 
Kamala Harris just has a very narrow two-point lead over Donald Trump out of Wisconsin. Too close to call. Kamala Harris is a 12-point lead over the Trump. And now we can make a projection out of the state of Maine. Kamala Harris will be the projected winner here. She will win this state by three percentage points over Donald Trump. While Donald Trump will carry the first, the second congressional district, and Harris will carry the first quite easily. Out of New Hampshire, the first gain here tonight for Kamala Harris that we are expecting of plenty. Kamala Harris will be the projected winner in the state of New Hampshire, a state that historically hates incumbents. Donald Trump barely carried the state back in 2020, and now Kamala Harris will go on to carry the state by around four percentage points, continuing its trend of hating incumbents with a passion. Out of Pennsylvania, too close to call, Kamala Harris now is an eight-point lead over Donald Trump. Out of Georgia, too close to call, Kamala Harris is a four-point lead over Trump. And now here is the current electoral map. Donald Trump has around a 40 electoral vote lead over Kamala Harris. We have several states too close to call, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, Georgia, the Rust Belt, including Minnesota. We still have plenty, we still have quite a few electoral votes, 234 left to count, most of which coming from California and the West Coast, but we still have plenty to go here tonight. And out of the Minnesota Senate race, Amy Klobuchar will be elected to her, what, fifth term in the Senate, fourth or fifth term, defeating Tim Pawlenty by 15 percentage points, her most narrow election victory to date. However, it is against a centrist Rockefeller Republican in Tim Pawlenty. At a New York Senate race, Kirsten Gillibrand will be elected to another term to the Senate, defeating, ah, oh, Jesus Christ, ignore it. At a Nebraska Senate race, Shane Osborne will be elected to his first term in the Senate, succeeding Deb Fisher, who is retiring. Shane Osborne, the former treasurer of the state, will beat Scott Cleave, who is doing very well in the rural areas for a Democrat, as well as the suburbs and urban areas. He's a, what I like to call a rural progressive, a progressive who votes in favor of the rural areas instead of the urban areas. We need more of those. Uh, Shane Osborne beats Scott Cleave by 12 percentage points. At a North Dakota Senate race, Kevin Kramer will be re-elected to another term, defeating Joel Heitkamp, the brother of the Senator Kevin Kramer beat Heidi Heitkamp. Joel Heitkamp will lose by 35 percentage points. At a Wyoming Senate race, John Barrasso, retiring this year, will be replaced by Eric Prince, who will defeat Mary Throne by 40 percentage points. At a Arizona Senate race, currently too close to call, Joe Arpaio, the incumbent senator, retiring this year is now looking to be succeeded by either the Phoenix Mayor Kate Gallego or the former Arizona Governor Doug Ducey. Eight-point lead for Kate Gallego currently at a Michigan Center. He's too close to call Mike Duggan, another target for Democrats. Mike Duggan has a 22-point lead over John James, the incumbent senator. At a New Mexico Center, race, too close to call the incumbent senator Martin Chavez, who won in a red wave year. Granted, there was a major third-party vote splitter in Gary Johnson, but he's currently leading Aubrey Dunn Jr., a very libertarian Republican, by 38 points. At a Texas Senate race, Colin Allred, Congressman, is leading incumbent Senator Ted Cruz by eight percentage points. At a Wisconsin Senate race, too close to call, another target for Democrats, former Congressman Ron Kind, who lost in 2022, uh, or retired in 2022, excuse me, is currently leading incumbent Senator Kevin Nicholson by 20 points. And at a Florida Senate race, a big win for Republicans that they're keeping this seat, Jeff Atwater, a uh, neocon establishment Republican will be elected to his first term in the Senate, defeating Randolph Bracey by two points. Randolph Bracey doing very well in the suburbs, doing very well in the panhandle for a Democrat, doing very well where he needs to. However, he's just not good enough. And now we can project with Jeff Atwater's victory, the Republican Party will retain the majority in the Senate. They will retain their uh, power in the Senate, which is a good sign for Donald Trump. The Republicans going forward, whether Kamala Harris beats Trump here tonight, she will have to go through a Republican Senate majority. And at a main Senate race, Cynthia Deal will be elected to her first term in the Senate, defeating Richard Bennett by three percentage points, running even with Kamala Harris. Out of Pennsylvania Senate race, Bob Casey Jr., an electoral juggernaut in the state, will be re-elected to another term, defeating David McCormick by four percentage points. And here is the current Senate composition. Republicans add 51 seats to the Democrats' 38 seats. At a North Dakota's governor race, Drew Wrigley will be re-elected to another term, defeating Joshua Bashi by 30 points. And here's the current governor composition. Democrats at 23 seats, so the Republicans 22 seats. Now you have to remember, independents do have one seat with Bill Walker up in Alaska. It is now 10 p.m. and the following states have full closings. 
out of Iowa. Donald Trump will be the projected winner here. This is Vice President Joni Ernst's home state. Trump will beat Kamala Harris by 18 points here in the state of Iowa. Out of Montana, Donald Trump is the projected winner, winning this state by around 16 percentage points. Out of Utah, Donald Trump is the projected winner. He will go on to win the state by around 21 percentage points. And now Nevada is too close to call. Kamala Harris a 20-point lead over Donald Trump. Out of Texas, Donald Trump will be the projected winning area. The state was won by 12 points by Trump back in 2020. It is now being won by him by 9 points as the state continues to trend to the left. Out of Arizona, still too close to call. Kamala Harris is a 10-point lead now in the state. Michigan, too close to call. Kamala Harris is a 12-point lead here. Minnesota, too close to call. Kamala Harris is a 12-point lead here. New Mexico, too close to call. Kamala Harris is a 10-point lead. Out of Wisconsin, too close to call. Kamala Harris is an 8-point lead. Pennsylvania, too close to call. Kamala Harris is a 4-point lead here. Georgia, too close to call. Kamala Harris' lead narrows to 2 points. And here's a current electoral map. Donald Trump has broken the 200 electoral mark, which is bad news for Kamala Harris. She is still stuck at 132. However, 178 electoral votes to go still anyone's night and we're about to hit the west coast which will give democrats plenty of electoral votes to catch up out of montana center race matt rosendale will be re-elected to his second term defeating john morrison the former state treasurer by 12 percentage points out of utah center race mike kennedy will be elected to his second term at, in the senate defeating ben mcadams by 12 points underperforming donald trump by a large margin out of nevada center race too close to call stephen klubeck a left-wing nationalist type Democrat is currently leading a uh, moderate, boring Republican, Dean Heller, by around 14 percentage points. Out of Arizona Senate race, Governor Doug Ducey, big win for Republicans, will be elected to his first term in the Senate here in Arizona, defeating Kate Gallego by around 6 percentage points. A uh, big win for Republicans, big win for Doug Ducey here in the state of Arizona. And in New Mexico, Martin Chavez will be re-elected to, I guess, his second term to the Senate, defeating why do I do this to myself? And Texas Senate race, Ted Cruz will be re-elected to another term in the Senate, defeating Colin Allred by six percentage points. Out of Michigan Senate race, too close to call, Mike Duggan has a 12-point lead over John James. Out of Wisconsin Senate race, too close to call, Ron Kind has a 12-point lead over Kevin Nicholson. And here's the current Senate composition. Chuck Schumer and the Democrats at 39 seats, and Mitch McConnell and the Republicans at 55 seats. Uh... Here at Catholic Politics, we doubt Republicans will regain a supermajority. But looking at these numbers, you'd assume they would. But trust us, we doubt it's going to happen. Out of Montana's governor race, Tim Fox will be re-elected to another term as governor, defeating Casey Schreiner by 15 percentage points. Out of Utah's governor race, Thomas Wright will be re-elected as governor, defeating Neil Hansen by 20 points. And here's the current governor composition. The Republicans only need one more seat they only need one more seat to uh to retain control of the governor's association but democrats have 23 seats it's now 11 p.m and the following states have poll closings out of california kamala harris will win her home state no surprise here she will win here by 35 percentage point as the state as a whole continues to trend more and more to the left now to hawaii kamala harris will be the projected winner here winning the state by around 25 percentage points. Out of Oregon, Kamala Harris will be the projected winner, winning here by around 12 percentage points. A state that was competitive back in 2020 is now being won by a safe margin by the Democrats. Washington, too close to call. Or excuse me, Washington will go to Kamala Harris. Just ignore me, I'm tired. Kamala Harris wins by 15 points. Out of Idaho, Donald Trump will win this safe Republican state by around 40 points. And now out of Michigan, another flip for Democrats. Kamala Harris flips another state to the blue side. Michigan will go to Kamala Harris by two percentage points, which could spell doom for John James' Senate run. Out of Minnesota, Kamala Harris is the projected winner. She will flip Minnesota back to blue, winning here by around four percentage points, a state Donald Trump barely carried back in 2020. And New Mexico, Kamala Harris will be the projected winner here, flipping New Mexico blue as she wins here by four points. Out of Wisconsin, Donald Trump will keep Wisconsin into the Republican column 
as he wins here by three percentage points. A bit narrower than his victory back in uh, 2020, but still a lean margin victory nonetheless. At a Nevada, too close to call. It is a statistical tie between the two candidates. Arizona, too close to call. Kamala Harris is a two-point lead over Donald Trump. Pennsylvania, too close to call. Kamala Harris is a four-point lead over Donald Trump. Georgia, too close to call. Kamala Harris is a two-point lead over Donald Trump. And here's the current electoral maps thus far. A very, very close election now that we have both Texas and California off the board. Uh, Donald Trump has 242 electoral votes to Kamala Harris is 240. This election could go either way. Donald Trump is currently leading the popular vote by one percentage point, which is very good for this point in the election. However, however, we still have Alaska, which won't bother anything. So if we had to guess, the states that will decide it will most likely either be Arizona or Pennsylvania. Uh, Georgia is very much looking like that Kamala Harris could end up winning here. Nevada looks like Kamala Harris could win there. While Pennsylvania, too much of a toss up. It looks like Donald Trump is leading in Arizona. That's what the numbers are looking at so far. Out of California center race, Kevin DeLeon, who advanced with a Democrat, will defeat John Melendez by 12 percentage points. John Melendez doing well with Republican voters. Out of Hawaii center race, Ed Case will be elected to his first term in the Senate, succeeding retiring Senator Mazzy Rono. He will defeat Duke Iona by 25 points. Out of Washington center race, Mariah Cantwell will be re-elected to another term, defeating Joey Gibson by 14 points. At a Nevada Senate race, Dean Heller will outperform Donald Trump and win another term to the Senate, defeating Steve Klubeck by three percentage points. At a Michigan Senate race, too close to call, Mike Duggan has a two-point lead over John James. At a Wisconsin Senate race, too close to call, Ron Kind has a two-point lead over Kevin Nicholson. And here's the current Senate composition. Chuck Schumer and the Democrats have 42 seats, while Mitch McConnell and the Republicans have 56 seats. Out of Washington's governor race, Bob Ferguson will be elected to his first term as governor. He will defeat fellow Democrat Doe Constantine by around two percentage points, a very close election between these two Democrats. And here is the final, actually, the final governor's composition as no one has a majority due to Bill Walker being an independent who caucuses with no one up in Alaska. But Democrats have 24 seats, and the Republicans 25 seats. Robert Rieves can be thanked for his gain up in North Carolina. It is now 1 a.m. in the following states, that being Alaska, has their poll closings, and Donald Trump will be the projected winner here in the state of Alaska. No one is shocked, but you might be shocked here. Donald Trump only wins the state of Alaska by 10 percentage points, a kind of a big swing to the left compared to 2020, where he won by 16. It is now 1.15 a.m. We can now make a call out of Wisconsin Center race. Kevin Nicholson will be reelected to another term, his second term, to the Senate, defeating Ron Kind very narrowly by 0.8%. Very narrow election win for Kevin Nicholson over Ron Kind. A battle for white working class voters in the state. It is now 1.30 a.m. We can now make a call out of Nevada. Donald Trump will narrowly carry the state by 0.6%. A narrow victory for Donald Trump in the state of Nevada. A state he barely he won by two points in 2020, now winning by 0.6%. It is now 1.45 a.m. We can now make a call out of Pennsylvania. Donald Trump wins a state by 0.4%. A uh, state he won by, I think, 1% back in 2020, if I'm not mistaken. Now winning by 0.4%, winning Erie County, which is the bellwether of the state. Kamala Harris and the Democrats spent a lot of time here in Pennsylvania compared to the rest of the states, uh, but they couldn't get the job done. And with that, we can safely say that Donald Trump has been re-elected as President of the United States, defeating Kamala Harris. Here's the map on your screen now. Kamala Harris can win both Georgia and Arizona if she wants. It won't matter because Donald Trump is at 270 to win. It is now 2 a.m. and we can now make a call at a Michigan Center race. A brutal blow for Republicans and John James as Mike Duggan has been elected to the Senate, defeating Republican John James, flipping the Senate seat blue. He will defeat John James by 0.3%, very, very close here in the state of Michigan. It is now 2.15 a.m. We can now make a call out of Georgia. Kamala Harris makes a shocking flip here in Georgia. Kamala Harris winning big in the state of Georgia. 
she didn't she earlier she said it, she didn't think she'd be doing this well in Georgia but thanks to the Atlanta metro area training farther and farther to the left or farther farther left I guess not to the left but left in general Kamala Harris wins the state by 0.3% it is now 2.30 a.m. we can now make the final call that being Arizona the closest state tonight Donald Trump will go on to win this state by 0.2%. Kamala Harris winning Maricopa County. Donald Trump not having the same fire that Doug Ducey have as our many Harris Ducey voters. Can you explain that down in the comments? Down in the comments section, this is a live thing. A premium thing. I don't know. Y'all asked for this. I don't, I don't even know if... I'll, I'm at work by the time this is coming out. I enjoy it. And here is the... Final electoral map, Donald Trump winning 282 electoral votes to Kamala Harris' 256 electoral votes. Despite choosing an Hispanic running mate, she does not do well. She actually does worse than Hillary Clinton in the Hispanic vote, which, believe it or not, that happened. And here is the marginal map, the closest Republican state being Arizona, and the closest Democrat state being Georgia. And here is the Senate map. Oh, excuse me. Democrats flipping two seats, that being Michigan and Virginia with Mike Duggan and Kenny Alexander. Those two defeating Nick Freitas and John James. A brutal defeat to the Republicans. John James more so than Nick Freitas, but still. And here is the marginal map. The closest Republican state being Wisconsin and the closest Democrat state being Michigan. Both of whom were won by lean margins by Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. Thank you guys so much for watching. Put potato in, if you're alive, put potato. Right now, do it. There you go. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is the Catech one saying, peace.